Growing up in Oregon, was the plan to get into film? <sighs> Boy, you know, so when I grew up, um, yeah, I mean, I fell in love with film at a very early age, but, you know, and every filmmaker you know had <laughs> the story, oh, my dad gave me a camera when I was a fetus and I was <laughs> filming my own birth or whatever. Uh, that was not me. Um, I, <laughs> my mother is very religious and movies were considered evil and tools of the devil. I was, am still told that Hollywood is the lion's den and this is where I will lose my soul. Um, so there was that. My dad was a machinist, uh, you know, a salt of the earth, you know, you know, an engineer kind of person. And like, he just didn't understand it. So like, there was no one in my life that knew this but I just wanted it so bad. I'll never forget the day when I was at the beach with my dad and I look over and a grip truck pulls up. Now I'm young. I, I don't know how young I was, but young, young enough, but I recognized what it was. I saw that back door open up and it's full of sea stands and sandbags and lights. And I swear my feet left the ground and I just wanted to like go to it. Like I didn't, I don't know what they were doing over there, but it looked like magic. And my dad just looks at me like, Pfft. You really want to be over there, don't you? <laughs> like, you know, he was sort of smirking and smiling, you know, not in a negative way, but, but whatever the case, I was denied this. Like, it, it, there was no access I had. Like, before I could drive, I wasn't given the camera. Um, the only thing I had was a tape recorder. So I would record um, my stories on, you know, just with audio. And I ended up writing a novel when I was in grade school because I just had no access to anything. It wasn't until I got my driver's license when I could go to the public cable access station and borrow their camera. That was how I first got into it. Um, I don't know if they still do that, but that's a wonderful resource. It was for me at that time. But I didn't know, I never had a mentor. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know anyone who did this for a living. I went to school and majored in communications, which didn't help me at all, really. They didn't, I didn't even know about film festivals. I didn't understand LA. I was terrified of the big cities. And of course, I've got the weight of that's the lion's den weighing over me. So I didn't know what to do. Um, and I, when I got out of college, I didn't know about internships. I didn't understand how to do that. So when I got out of school, I worked a dead-end job for two years. And I was so depressed because I wasn't even on the ladder to get to where I wanted to go. I had one friend that I knew in Nashville, Tennessee. And he said, well... You know, you are a musician and you like film, so there's a lot of that here. You could try Nashville. I'm like, I, I'll do anything. So I moved there without knowing, even knowing my roommate. I just moved. Oh, wow. And I'm going to go. Oh, no. And even when I got there, though, I still had the same problem. Like, I didn't know anyone. I didn't know what to do. I, I worked waiting tables at the Olive Garden at night, leaving my days open so I could intern somewhere, but no one wanted me. And I had to, and again, there was no plan. I just, I was desperate to, do anything to, you know, just let me look at the work being made. I don't care. And that's what I ended up telling people. You don't need to give me a job. Just um, let me watch the work being made. I don't, just let me be in the room when it's happening. And eventually one guy said, okay, you can watch me work. <laughs> it sounds so creepy, but it's, that's exactly how it started. And, and so that sort of was, okay, this plan's working. I'll try that. So I went that way. And finally, after a few weeks, he said, all right, I got to shoot next week. You want to come help? I can pay you 50 bucks a day. I'm like, Garrett, great, great. I'll do it for free even. I don't care. Get to set. It was five days of shooting. We worked, excuse me, 20 hours a day. My knees were swollen by the end of the week because it was a very small crew. And like I said, 50 bucks a day. And it was the time of my life. Like I finally got somewhere. But... Um, the plan was I didn't know. Like, and that's the thing. If anyone tells you they, they know how to make it, they're, they're lying. Because there is no way. This isn't like being a doctor or a lawyer. If you want to be those things, that path is clear. You go to school for this many years. You, get, you go to do your residency. You intern, da, da, da. Go back to school. You know, you, there is a very defined path. There is no path for filmmaking. You, any way you can get there, you have to go. That means snatching onto every opportunity you've got. The media, as soon as you find something that it looks like it might be a way through. So that's how it has been for me. Like, you know, oh, an opportunity to work on a film as a PA. I don't care, I'll do it. Like, yes, I'm in. Um, that has worked out to be very, very much in my favor. Like even things like fan films. 
for example. Um, I'm directing a fan film right now that most people kind of poo-poo the idea of fan films, which is kind of crazy to me because fan films is interesting. Uh, when you think about doing a short film, right? If you're trying to practice your craft, well, when you get it done, you got to talk someone into watching it because what good is it if no one sees your work, right? You can get into festivals and when you play a festival, more than likely as a short, you'll be crammed into a block of shorts and most of the people in the audience, and this is not being cynical here, this is real reality. When you get shoved into a block of shorts, most people in the audience are the other filmmakers who made those other shorts. So it's, it's just a smattering of other people, like they're only their way to watch their, their work, right? You have a term for it, I think. <laughs> it's a something sandwich? <laughs> I probably do, but I'm, I'm blanking on what the Okay, term is. It's, it's, it's probably not safe for work. I will, I will, I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll fast forward. Yeah, I don't remember what the term is. Anyway, so like, yeah, they're, they're, um, they're all that. So anyway, you got to get people to watch your film, and it's really hard to do. You go, oh, so yeah, you got to watch my short. It's about this time traveler who went back in time, and he meets his grandfather, or whatever, right? Okay, if I have 15 minutes, how long is it? You know, it's 25 minutes. Oh, man, i got to find 25 minutes to watch a film. Or... You make a fan film, and they go, oh, I made a, I'm making a fan film about Splinter Cell. I love Splinter Cell. You made a fan film over that? Oh, too, I want to check it out. It's, so the name of the game, you got to remember, is to get people to see what you're doing. Whether you're an actor or a cinematographer, director, it doesn't matter. Writer, you have to get people to see your work. And what's the shortest way to get that to done? You, you got to look at, that's where the opportunities come in. And fan films have been great for me and for other filmmakers. I mean, look at the guy who directed 10 Cloverfield Lane, made a fan film about the video game Portal. That got him, boom, got him down the road. Uh, there's a guy I've heard who's working on a big franchise film who made a fan film for Bumblebee. That got him into some doors. Like, it, uh, there's many, many, many stories about people who did that and then they got to another level. It's gotten me into rooms making fan films. Um, and that's what I mean by the opportunity. Like at first, you know, if you judge it, be careful. Take a serious look at what opportunity this might be and snatch onto it and grab your way forward. It's, uh, it's how I've made my whole living and made my life. So even though Hollywood maybe was considered like, you know, the, the gateway to bad things, I see though that like the work ethic is what is what propelled you. So even though it yeah. was forbidden, you still have that work ethic in you. Yeah, Some yeah. It was a good combination in some It sense. did, yeah. And you know, you're in an industry where there is all kinds of unscrupulous people. Like, this, yeah, ask anyone. They've had some sort of bad experience with film and getting screwed over by anyone. Uh, so when you work with integrity, that means a lot. This is why people when you watch, it's like Martin Scorsese, for example, he always hires the same people. Same. That's because integrity can be rare. So when you find the people that are integrity and talented, you hang on to them with everything you've got and you fight to get them on all your projects because you know that they're good people that will deliver. Yeah, that's, that's really valuable. That's better than any demo reel. That's better than your fancy website, integrity, people knowing that you're gonna do what you say you will do, delivering it on time. That's very important. And, and you know, read any business book, they'll tell you the same thing.